802.1x and EEP. EEP is the Extensible Authentication Protocol, uh, defined here as a flexible transport protocol used to carry arbitrary authentication information. Um, so what we take a look at is when a user or supplicant first joins the network, when that link comes up, the authenticator is typically gonna query it and say, hey, who goes there? And this is what we call EEP. You'll also see this abbreviated as EEP over LAN. And what we're doing is we're basically authenticating to the network. We're telling them who we are before we go any further. So normally we attach to a network. You might do something like, um, you know, first we attach, we do a DHCP request. And we, we pull an address. And then once we've got our address, we do a DNS lookup and we just start patching things right away. Well, in this case, this network says, hold up a minute, who are you? And then once we know who you are, we'll decide what it is that you're allowed to do. So we can do this just for authentication, and we can say, okay, well, we'll assign network policies, network permissions based on who you are. Or if we wanted to do it a little bit more intelligently, we could take a look at your security posture or health status. And we can say, okay, how's your antivirus doing? Do you have your firewall on? Is your uh, Windows or OSX operating system, is that patched and is that up to date? And if it isn't, we can give you a different policy. We can say, okay, well, let's maybe not put you in general population right now. There could be some type of malware that's circulating that could impact you because you haven't been patched. So we'll place you, for the moment, into a quarantine VLAN. Uh, in that quarantine VLAN, you can go ahead and get updated, uh, get you patched. Once we know that you're patched, we can perform something called change of authorization or COA to get you back into uh, the normal network environment. So one of the things that makes this possible uh, is EEP, the fact that there's a conversation that's happening between the end user and the gateway to the network. That gateway could be a switch, it could be a wireless access point, in some scenarios it's gonna be your firewall. So when we look, look at this historically, um, for some of you that have been doing this a while, this may seem really familiar to old protocol called PPP, the point-to-point -point protocol. Uh, I first encountered this with dial-up. It uh, was used with frame relay, it was used with ATM, it's even used with uh, DSL and cable modems in sometimes rare circumstances. Uh, but really this is a, kind of an old protocol. Originally it used PAP, which was clear text, and then CHAP, which was challenge handshake, uh, for authentication. It was effectively a layer two authentication protocol. And what makes that so exciting is the fact that, well, we authenticate all the time, but it's based on HTTP, it's based on SSH, it's based on FTP. It's based on these other protocols that rely on TCP working, that rely on IP working. Well, we have to authenticate users and we haven't given them an IP address yet. We haven't applied an access list because we don't know who they are. So this is a very low level authentication protocol. Uh, originally, they were really building this for wireless networking. We had to get a solution that was scalable to replace WEP with. And as it was being formed, it worked really well on wired networks as well. So once you go through the kind of the pains and the process of learning about this and you deploy it, once you can do it on a wireless network, you can do it just as easily on a wired network. And we can apply this across the campus. So it's media independent, which is nice, it means it can work on wired, wired or wireless, and it can work over various data link layers, such as PPP, uh, 802.3 wired, wireless, etc. It's going to give us a broad range of authentication methods. That's why we call it extensible, right? There's lots of different implementations. Um, EEP MD5, EEP TLS, PEEP, EEP FAST, etc. Uh, and basically, EEP defines four basic packet types that are going to transport all of our EEP messages. And that's uh, what we're going to take a look at here. So 802.1x and EEP. When a switch port is configured for .1x port control, it's now uh, configured as a controlled port. So your default state is unauthorized. In order for traffic to be passed, you have to authenticate. So that's what they're showing us here. They say by default, only EEP over LAN frames are gonna be forwarded. When we try to connect out for FTP, port 80, when we're trying to do lookups for DNS, they say, no way, You're not, you don't even have an IP address yet. You can't do those things. The first thing you have to do now is let us know who you are. And this is what it basically looks like. You've got the supplicant, and remember these terms, supplicant, authenticator, and authentication server. These are gonna be the same across all vendors, 
um, when you start to integrate with other things, maybe you know Microsoft uh, Active Directory, you'll see these terms coming up again. So the supplicant or that end user wants access. They're sending an EPO all start, they get back a login request, they send a login response. Fair enough. Our authenticator, in this case a switch, goes, oh, I don't have your user account. So he forwards it to Cisco ICE. Cisco ICE looks for that uh, specific user account, finds it, and then comes back to the switch and it says this is what's going on with that user. Um, effectively, a lot of times what we're doing is considering things like group membership. And we go, what group are you a member of? Oh, IT, you'll get these um, policies associated with your connection. You can access these particular resources.